Welcome everybody to a second video on doing some unit cell calculations. So you can see the problem we're going to tackle there in the top left. Silver crystallizes in a face-centered unit cell. The radius of a silver atom is 144 picometers. We're going to determine the density of silver. And I didn't write it in the problem, but we're going to specify that we want to get our answer in typical dimensions for density, something like grams per cubic centimeter. I'm not going to report it in grams per cubic picometers because you and I aren't used to cubic picometers. So we're going to get it in a unit that we're used to when we talk about densities, grams per cubic centimeter. So it is face centered. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at the cube in the top right hand corner and let's go ahead and, and build a partial unit cell that depicts the face centered unit aspect of silver. So if it's face centered, that means you have silver atoms on all eight corners of the unit cell. And I'm just going to draw the first four on the front face of the cube. Additionally, if it's face centered, then you have also a silver atom in the dead center of the face of each cube, or each face, I should say, of the cube. And so that's going to tell me that, if you remember, for face centered unit cells, the atoms touch along the face diagonal. And if I indicate the length of the radius of the silver atom as being R, then that face diagonal has a distance of 4 radii, 4 r, okay? And I'm going to label then the edge length of my cube with the letter E, okay? So I have an edge length of E, and I have a face diagonal of 4 r. So to begin to solve this problem, I think you can see where we're headed. We're going to use a little Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to know then that edge squared plus edge squared is going to have to equal quantity 4r squared. And I can do some algebra on here, and eventually I can determine that my edge length is going to be equal to the radius times the square root of 8. All right, work through that math if you need to, but make sure that for face-centered unit cells, you can figure out that the edge length can be related to the radius by the equation edge equals the radius of the atom in question times the square root of 8. Okay, so what can I do from here? Well, I was given the radius of the silver atom as being 144 picometers, so then my edge length will be 144 picometers times the square root of 8, and that's going to come out to be about 407 picometers. Now, in the previous video, I mentioned you've got to be familiar with working with units like nanometers and angstroms and picometers. So you're going to want to be able to convince yourself that 407 picometers is also known as 4.07, there's a point there, 4.07 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters, which then is going to tell me then that the volume of my cube is going to be the edge cubed, which in this case will be equal in centimeters cubed, 6 point, again there's a point there, 6.74 times 10 to the minus 23 cubic centimeters. And again, I wanted to get it in cubic centimeters so I could play around with units that you and I are comfortable with when it comes to density. So I now have the volume, and of course, density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, so I'm halfway there, I just need to get the mass of my unit cell. I have here this very small number over here, that's the volume of a single unit cell. Now I need to get the mass of a single unit cell. So the mass of my silver unit cell will be equal to, well, how about the molar mass of silver? The molar mass of silver is 107.9, again there's a point there, grams per mole. 
but in my unit cell, I don't have a mole of silver atoms, right? In a face-centered unit cell, do you remember how many atoms you have in face-centered? Hopefully you remember that you have four. So I have four atoms of silver. And then I'm going to need to get rid of my per mole bit and throw in the Avogadro's relationship. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I'm just going to write that as n sub a because I don't have enough space to write out all of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd here. Okay, So this is going to give me the mass of a single unit cell. And of course when I take about 108 multiplied by 4 and I divide it by Avogadro's number, I'm going to get a pretty small number, as I should, because this is again the mass of one single unit cell. So I'm going to grab my calculator here and I'm going to go ahead and do this out. 107.9 times 4 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and I get 7.17, 7.17 times 10 to the minus 22 grams. So to get my density, I'm going to go ahead and take this mass I just solved for, divide it by that density I have. So let me take my mass, divide it by the density of 6.74 times 10 to the negative 23, um, and I'm going to get, let's see, 7.17 EE to the negative 22 divided by 6.74 EE to the negative 23, and I get, whoop, that number doesn't make any sense. Let me do that one more time. 7.17 exponent 22 divided by 6.74 exponent 23. There we go. I get 10, whoops, get the pen there, 10.6 grams per centimeters cubed. That number makes some sense. I bet if I looked up the density of silver on Wikipedia, I bet I get a number that's darn close to 10.6. All right, so here's another example of a unit cell calculation. We went from the structure of the unit cell, that it's face-centered, the radius of a silver atom, and I was able to get the density of the unit cell. So one more example of a unit cell type calculation. All right, we'll practice others in class and on future uh, practice problem sets, uh, but there's a couple of examples of unit cell calculations.